Let's get your Bible open. I want to talk about falsehood. Hiding on the falsehood in the book of Isaiah. Amen. And I also want to talk about come out from among them. Yes. And be separate. Amen. We don't even have no room here. They sitting all back out there. So uh, Brooklyn, we want to open up a church here in Brooklyn. And this is what we're looking to do. And New York, you're expensive. My God, you're expensive. I can't, I, I can't help it. People say, you know, every telecast I see, they're like you're opening up places everywhere. Well, I wish I was a millionaire. I wish I was a millionaire because I don't like coming in the place and leaving without setting up church. I don't like using other people facilities because sometimes if you preach what they don't like, they can close the door on you. That's right. Amen. I know from experience, uh, we had 25 come last night to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And, and uh, we were told that we can use the facility here to baptize. But then all of a sudden they said, no, we couldn't use it. So they had to scramble around. We told all the people that was here last night, they said, we all coming back. We ain't leaving without that baptism. Amen. So they all came back and added to some more that want to be baptized today. So there was a preacher that decided to open up his church and uh, we're going to get them down there and baptize them. And maybe by the time we baptize everybody after this service and some more by this evening, then maybe he can find out who I am when I leave town. <laughs> Right now, he may not know me. Well, keep it that way. <laughs> but uh, I have been to places in America and abroad, and preachers have said I can use their facilities, and they came to the service because they were watching us on television, but then the word of God hit them, and they got so angry, they wouldn't say nothing, but what they done waited till we got to the church people lined up in cars like a funeral line loads of people while the preacher deliberately locked his doors and then sit in his church and laugh because he refused to let folks come in and get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ so for that reason I would to God that I have so much capital not to buy a plane, not to buy cars, not to buy mansions, but to set up temples where truth can be preached so that people can have a righteous place to go to, a city of refuge, you know, where the word of God can be preached freely, where the word can have a free course. So I believe one day God going to make it happen. I just wish he hurry up. Because I'm in need right now. Right now. God willing, we're, amen, looking on, working on, and simultaneously opening up places in Detroit and Chicago and other, as everybody wants us to open up a church everywhere all around the world. I often tell the folk, you know, I mock them over the air because I get countless and countless of emails. Pastor Jennifer, we need a church here. We need a church here. We need a church here. We need a church there. We need one everywhere. We need it everywhere. But you got to work to do it. Is that right? You're going to have to work. You want me to work with you and bring you the gospel? You're going to have to work with us to set up shop. Yeah. Hey Amen. I would love to set up churches everywhere. I don't care where it's at. I'm not the type of man that's choicy about a neighborhood. I set up a church right in back of a crack house. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. I catch you while you're giving out cocaine. I give out scripture. Yes, right. Amen. Just, 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 just last week, we bought a new temple in Columbia, South Carolina, and uh, we're there. And, and the real estate agent came down 
the brothers was there working this week and the real estate agent said, y'all bought a church down here? We well, he said, oh yeah. He said, y'all must be strong. They come in this part of Columbia? I said, yes. I'm not a man that look to go to suburbs and I ain't worrying about that where the grass is green. I paint the sidewalk green. That's good enough for me. Wherever God put us, I say amen. Doesn't matter to me where God put us. Amen. I go where the grass is green. I go where there is no grass at all. I go where the street just littered with cocaine vials and liquor bottles. Thank God. And that's the way Nazareth, Nazareth. The Bible, why the Bible said, can anything clean come out of Nazareth? Nazareth is what we call a ghetto today. So this gospel that we preach go anywhere, everywhere. I'm not like a politician, you know, when they run for office, they just go in neighborhoods, you know, where there ain't no praise, no spray paint and no trash in the street and talk about they for everybody. I come every place I possibly can. Amen. I, I set up church any way possible. If we are set up church downstairs, why you have a party upstairs. Lord, I take God and let the gospel blast through the sheetrock until you come from upstairs and want to know what in the world is going on. Are you getting me? All right, let's go to work in the book of pain. Amen. Follow me in your Bible. In the book of Isaiah chapter 28. And we'll start reading at verse 14. All right, follow me. Isaiah chapter 28 and at verse 14. All right. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Ye scornful men. In at verse 12. I want to get the lofty looks of men. I want to get all of it. At verse 12. All right. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And? and this is the refreshing. What else? Yet they would not hear. Uh -huh. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. That's the way it's coming to people now. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. You see, when we go into the word of God, we like to go into precept upon precept. And then line upon line and break it down here a little and there a little so you don't walk away ignorant and blind and deaf and dumb. That's right. Because it don't do no good to, to carry the Bible. You don't understand it. Right. Now you can read it all you want. That's right. But without understanding, reading don't help you none. All right. Here a little and there a little. And they might go and fall back and, and be broken. And snared and taken. Uh -huh. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men. Hear God's word, ye scornful men. That rule this people which is in Jerusalem. What is it? Because ye have said. Ye have said. We have made a covenant with death. Huh. Making a covenant with death. I want to break this down line upon line. Making a covenant with death have more than one meaning. There are some people who have made a covenant with death in the form of making a covenant or an agreement with the grave based upon their lifestyle. They live a life that I kill them early. Out there wild and barbaric and foolish and silly and partying, drinking and rushing yourself to the cemetery. Making a covenant, a pact with death. Then death have another meaning. For the Bible says the sting of death is sin. So then you have folk that have agreed within their heart to just be wicked and be of the devil and be full of hell and ungodly. All right. Because ye have said we have made a covenant with death. Come on, son. I want folks to be able to hear you. Let's move quick. Just put the microphone on your lapel. Don't worry about that. Just leave it there and get it on your lapel. Not so much noise. Sorry, Pastor. God, you're a noisy reader. Come on, son. Because you have said. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying. You have made a covenant with death. You made a covenant with death. Have you ever made a covenant with sin? Yes. Yes. I want to say, they ain't never made a covenant with sin. You a lie. Everybody in here made one. That's right. When you was out there sinning and disobeying God, you made a covenant because a covenant is a pact, a promise. That's right. And when you made a promise to do wrong, you made a covenant with sin. That's right. And God come along by his mercy to break that covenant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. 
Amen. All right. We have made a covenant with death. And with hell or with and death. with hell. Are we at agreement? My God, look at here. Agreement. Imagine making an agreement, an agreement. with hell. Mm. And when the overflowing spirit shall pass through. This is how arrogant and self-righteous we become mm. when we're out there acting like a fool and when judgment going pass through, we say it won't come to us. It shall not come unto us. But what? For we have made lies our refuge. What is the world hiding under? And under falsehood. We have made lies our refuge. Our hiding place. And under falsehood. And under hypocrisy. Have we hid ourselves. Amen. Amen. All of us in here sometime in our life was hiding under lies Right. And falsehood. That's right. Lies and falsehood. Amen. Because anytime you're hiding under a teaching that contradict the word of God, that teaching is lies. Falsehood is that which is not real, but it projects the image of reality. And that's where church coming at. Church today is hiding under falsehood all around the world. They got steeples. They got crosses. They got people singing. They got people jumping and shouting. But some of these people are sincere. When I was in falsehood, man, I was serious. Yes, I did. I wanted to be right. And wanted to be saved. And I learned if you want to be right, even when you're in falsehood, the mercy of God will knock on your doorstep. And God will make a way for you to be right in his eyes. Falsehood, that which have a form of godliness, that which pretend to be godly. It sound right. It look right. Feels right. They profess that they know God. But it's not right. That's right. What is that? Now in the book of Titus chapter 1 and verse 16. What is it? They profess that they know God. Give away him some more juice, please. And in a, in a small room like this, give him juice. All right. I go back to the first one he took on. Come on, you get this straight so I can stop preaching and get you right. Get this straight. Use the other one that he had. Just throw it on your lapel. Just clip it on and turn it on. My God, clip it on, turn it on. Clip it on, turn it on. Leave the other one in your pocket. Just clip it on and turn it on. Just leave that down. Just read the Bible. They profess that they know God. Do you hear that? Titus chapter 1 and verse 16. They profess that they know God. And what? But in works, they deny him. You ever had a dumb preacher? Amen. All of us came from dumb preachers. That's right. I want to say, how you talking about my father? Your daddy was a dumb preacher. That's right. And he told me he didn't stand on the word of God. He was a dumb, blind preacher. That's right. Anytime you profess that you know the Lord, but in works you deny him, you don't know what you're doing. No. Now, let's look at how they deny God in works. They profess that they know God, but when it comes to doing God's work, they, deny. they ain't got a clue who God is. No. If I knew who the Lord was, and I can know him no more than what's written. That's right. The Bible says whatsoever things are written up four times is written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope and our hope come from God's everlasting word. That's right. So for me to be a wise master builder, a wise preacher, I got the bill according, thank God, of the blueprints of the scriptures. That's right. For you to be a wise sister and a wise brother. See, uh, many of us have uh, a dumb salvation. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Somebody say, I've never heard of that before. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. A dumb salvation. A salvation put together by dumb folk. Mm. A salvation that's preached by dumb folk. Amen. And a salvation that's obtained 
by dumb folk. Dumb is just another word for ignorant. That's all. Yeah? That's right. I mean, all of us was ignorant. Listen, when you bow your head and raise your hands, you got a dumb salvation. Amen. When you talk about I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I am saved, that's a dumb salvation. That's right. When you hold a hand of a no good bum that you think is a preacher and repeat some sinner's prayer like Williams used to do, you have a dumb salvation. That's right. Huh? That's right. All right, thank God. I'm going to have to get you back for making all that noise. All right, come on, sir. They profess that they know God. They profess that they know God. All right, thank God. That they know God. But in work. But in what? They, in work. In work. They deny him. That's scary. Yeah, Religion all around the world claim that they're Christians. They love Jesus. They serve in Jesus until you investigate their works. works. And then you'll find out their works don't have nothing in common right. with Jesus. That's right. Do you hear this? Give chapter and verse again. Titus chapter 1 and at verse 16. What is it? They profess that they know God. They profess, they proclaim, they preach, they teach, they testify that they know the Lord. But in works. But when you evaluate what they're doing. They in, in works. In works. They deny him. Hold it right there. Amen. Let's see how God is being denied in work. When the people in churches are not properly taught, then they are victims of the stupidity of the preacher. That's right. Because this is why I don't blame the people for being blind and ignorant and misled. We are products of teaching. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. It's like a car that come off the assembly line. If that man's job is to use that ribbon gun and Oh, and put those bolts on the tires and he don't do his job. Yeah. When that thing come off the assembly line, those wheels coming off. Right. I remember years ago when the uh, Lincoln Navigator came out. And I had the Navigator. And me and my family was on our way to church one day. Same week I put it in the shop. Had my tires rotated and whatnot. Got it out the shop. We was on our way to church. And three tires was on. And one just rolled right off. Oh. And all of us was in the SUV. It just rolled right off. Oh. Amen. I'm glad we wasn't on the expressway. Amen. The SUV is not designed to drive on three wheels. Your salvation is not designed to be partial. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. So teaching is what make us a complete child of God. Right. Wrong teaching give you incomplete salvation. A good example. If you're in a church and they tell you to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, but take you down in water, baptize you, but yet don't preach repentance. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now you see what I'm saying? That's right. Oh, they tell you to be baptized in the right name. Yeah. And people coming up being baptized, little children being baptized and all that stuff. But nobody never repent. And that repentance. Nobody never repent. And when they don't repent, salvation is not being taught complete. For the Bible says in the 17th chapter of Acts that repentance and remission of, and remission sin. of sin should be should be, should be, should be, should be, should be, preached. should be preached in his name. Where? Among all nations. Where should it start? Beginning at Jerusalem. So before the preacher actually preached baptism, he got to first preach repentance. repentance. Now you see what I'm telling you. That's right. They profess that they know God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They profess that they know God, but in works? In works they deny him. They deny him being abominable. They are abominable. And disobedient. And they are hard here. And unto every good And when they come to do good, reprobate. They are reprobate. reprobate. They are rebellious. So when they do it in part, that's why the word of God said, when that wicked perfect is come. That which is in part shall be done away. When a preacher comes to tell you, well, you need the Holy Spirit to, leave, to live right. You need the Holy Ghost to live right. But yet he don't tell you 
to prove that you have it, you got to speak in tongue like they did on the day of Pentecost. That's right. You never spoke in tongue, but yet you profess the Holy Spirit. You ain't got no Holy Spirit. No. You have to get it like they received it on the day of Pentecost. That's right. They was all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave us. That's right. You got to get a complete package. Remember what Jesus told Nicodemus? Verily, verily. I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter in. What is being born of the water, Jesus? You got to repent of your sins and go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. What is being born of the spirit, Jesus? Is when you feel with the spirit, by the spirit, from the spirit, which is the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongue and the spirit of the living God give utterance. Now, if I preach the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, but don't teach it like the word of God said, but teach it in part. Then I'm going to tell you, well, yes, you got to speak in tongue, but you start off doing it. That's right. Do the best you can. Then the Holy Ghost is going to come pick it up. That's right. I'm putting you on the falsehood. Mm -hmm. And then what you're going to start doing is making up stuff. And now you're gonna be out there, da 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 And you're gonna be wondering, well, when is the Holy Ghost gonna take over? Da 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 da. It has to be as the Spirit give us. That's why the Apostle Paul stopped in the Corinth and said, "They that speak in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. How be it in the Spirit? In the Spirit." He speaks <laughs> mysteries. But look at what Paul said. He speaks not unto man. So when you're speaking tongue by the Spirit and you're not speaking to man, how can a man tell you when to speak, how to speak, where to speak, how long to speak? That's right. Anytime you got a so called Holy Ghost, you only can feel when you see your preacher or when your preacher says, Speak! And you dabba 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 You got the devil out of hell. He that speaketh hell! Do you get what I'm telling you? That's right. All right, let's go back to the book of Isaiah. Listen at this now. Back in Isaiah 28 and at verse 15. Come on, For we have made lies our refuge. We have made lies our refuge. Lie, hiding on the lie. Women evangelists. Women bishops. Yeah. Amen. I have a brother now who reached out to me from Georgia, came from a false apostolic organization, Shiloh <laughs> Apostolic Church down there in Jamaica, where the headquarters is. God bless your heart, Shiloh. Shiloh. The word of God is pounding Shiloh. Amen. And the people are coming out of there like the Egyptians hooked up with the Jews that come on out of Egypt. Amen. They're coming out of there because now they got a woman bishop as an overseer, you got to be a hell-bound, spineless, poor excuse of a man. That's right. Bless God to say you're the man of your house, but now you shrink down to tell in your church. Amen. Yeah? Amen. The Bible says what? Well, we have made lies our refuge. Uh, you got to be pitiful to hide under a lie and know it's a lie. Yeah. Now, if you come fill this room up with $3 bills, $4 bills, $7 bills, and it add up to a trillion dollars. Why would I get happy? Amen. That's still false. Huh? That's right. America don't have no $3 bills and $4 bills and $7 bills. No. That's vain happiness. That's right. This is what preachers have done to you that are hearing you that are listening and watching. Right. You got a vain joy. Amen. You got happy in vain over some fake salvation. Amen. Bow your head and raise your hand. The preacher say you're saved. You are set up. Yeah. Got baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The preacher told you you're born again. You ain't born again at all. That's right. The preacher told you when I count to three, you're going to speak in tongue. One, two, three. You're filled with Casper. You ain't got the Holy Ghost. No, no. <laughs> you got Casper, the friendly ghost. That's right. You ain't got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, we take God. What did he say? We have made lies our refuge. We have made lies our refuge. Look at the lies that the uh, church hiding under divorce and remarry and flesh and blood in heaven and three gods in heaven and a little god and a big god and all this bundle of rubbish that's right they hide under lies that's right you hide under lies long time you will start believing the very lie you're hiding under yes you will you keep lying to a person for years that's right. 
They're going to defend it. They're going to fight for it. They're going to believe it. And when you bring them the truth, it's going to be hard to convert them. That's right. Huh? That's right. Listen, if we've been taught that one and one is seven, all of our life, and someone come and tell you, look, one and one is only two. No, it's not. What? You're going to have to work with that person and labor with that person before that person can accept the truth. That's right. Huh? Glory to God, listen at this. For we have made lies our refuge. I, I don't want to hide under no lie. No. No, everything I want to believe, I want it to be godly, true, righteous, infallible, and I want it to always reflect. The wisdom of God. Behold ye trust. Listen at this. And now in the book of Jeremiah chapter 7 and at verse 8. Jeremiah 7 begin at verse 7. At verse 7. All right, son. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place. Yes. In the land that I gave to your fathers. Uh -huh. Forever and ever. Behold ye trust. Behold ye trust. In lying words. That cannot profit. Amen. You viewers that are watching, why you keep watching these liars on social media and on television? Amen. What kind of words are they? Lying words. Oh, the Lord spoke to me and told me that he want me to have a jet. Then go fly on uh, United. That's right. Hey, man, go fly on United or American Airlines. That's right. Buy a ticket. Get on a jet. Fly wherever you want to go. Mm -hmm. But how hell bound wicked these men are, they don't have no fear. Any time a man can stand in front of anybody and it's come out of his mouth, the Lord told him this, that, and the other. When he know the Lord didn't speak to him, he don't have no fear. That's right. Man, I'll be too scared to say God said something and I know God didn't say it. Amen. I wouldn't want to lie on God. No way. God is not like a man. That's right. Oh, thank God. Do you hear what he said? Behold, ye trust. Ye trust. In lying words. You out there that got women preachers, you trust in a lie. That's right. You got women pastors and women bishops and women evangelists, you trust in a lie. Amen. You men that are watching that got ordained by some woman, your ordination is a lie. That's right. Your credentials is a lie. You that got baptized, baptized by a woman. Right name, wrong performance. It's all a lie. That's right. Did you hear what I'm telling you? Behold, you trust in lying you words. You trust and you get mad at me because you trust the liar. That's right. That's why I want the whole Bible in your face. That's right. Come on back to Bible. <laughs> Amen. Come on back to Bible. That's it. Ah. Amen. What did he say? Go ahead and take God. <laughs> Come on, son. They hold you trust in lies. You words. trust in lies. That cannot rough. You know, you won't get nothing out of it, but everlasting hell. Will you steal? Will you steal? Murder. Murder. I commit a I commit adultery. I swear falsely. I swear falsely. And burn incense and unto burn Baal. Burn incense unto what? Un unto Baal. Unto Baal. And walk after other gods. And walk after other gods. Will you know not? That's what the people are doing now. That's right. They're congregating in religion by the number. But one thing about the word of God is cutting its way through all these religions. That's right. I see the people coming out of all these religions all around the world. Catholic and Protestant and Christian scientists, apostolic, Pentecostal, non-denominational, Baptist, Buddhist, everything. everything. Just come out had a man write me from Japan. They said he was a Buddhist all his life. But now he wouldn't be baptized. Wonderful. In the name of glory to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Right. I mean, he realized that Buddha couldn't help him. No. Uh, ain't no fat man with a bald head standing there like that. He can't help yeah. Amen. He can't help you. That man got to come on and bring that clean head and go down in water. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What is that? Oh, we have made laws our refuge. All right, you that are here, are you in the church this afternoon? That's hiding under lies. Do your church tell you you can divorce? Mm. Do your church tell you nothing wrong with living together, not married? Amen. Do your church tell you the way to be saved is bow your head and raise your hands right. and accept Christ where you're at? Do your church ordain some of you women here to be little slick evangelists mm. and little loud mouth mm. bishops? Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. Your church is where you go to, fella. Amen. Is homosexuality is allowed? Yeah. Is the preacher gay? Is the preacher gay, I said. I said, is the preacher gay today? Amen. Huh? Amen. So we thank God, do you hear? We have made lies our refuge. We made lies. Hey, do you got a bigot for a pastor? Go ahead. Do you got a racist for a bishop? Go ahead. Is your bishop telling you only black folk going to be saved? Is your so-called pastor tell you if you're the only way to be right, you got to be white? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Do you hear what they said? 
We have made lies our refuge. And you see, I have to break up everything because the word of God is a hammer. Go ahead. It's a hammer, and I got the hallelujah. I got to sling that hammer with all my God given might. That's right. And wherever it lands, so be it. That's right. Hey! Well, you bear in mind, if you in the way when we swing, I ain't gonna tell you to move. I'm gonna tell you stay right there. That's right. Stay up. That's right. Oh, thank God, so I can hit you where you need to be hit. Do your preacher? Hey, listen. Hey, you that out there, you that are here. Do your church that you are you in? Does it? Does this preacher get you living together? Not married. Does a preacher get you having all these babies and you ain't married? Does a preacher get you out there in gay parades and all? Are, are, you, are you out there with your fake hair and tattoos all over your body and rings everywhere? Huh? You see, when you got that stuff, that's your past life. That's right. And we said, some folk now got tattoos on when they was out there center. Amen. Now they repent of their sins and baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. Have the Holy Ghost. Now they can look. They look at when they was ignorant. That's right. And blind. And they can say, if I knew what I do now, I wouldn't be painted up like this. That's right. Huh? That's right. What do you say? Well, we have made lies our refuge. We have made lies our refuge. We have made lies. That hair ain't yours. You bought it from Walgreens. You, you're hiding under it. That's right. You're hiding under it. That's right. That's right. And them eyelashes ain't long, ain't yours. You got it out that little box from your medicine cat. Amen. Huh? Amen. Hey, man, you know God didn't put all them holes in your body. Go ahead, hey, man, go. you got your lips pierced, navel pierced, birthed, well, your womb pierced, man got his anatomy pierced. What's the matter with you? You got so many pins in you, you're like a pin cushion. That's right. Huh? Amen. You may love. You may love our refuge. Hey, Amen. I was talking to two sisters today. God bless their heart that are here today for the first time, and they gave me their testimony. One sister said, my God, Pastor Jenny, you preached the word of God until terror hit me. She said, fear came upon my soul. She said, I took off everything. Amen. <laughs> he said, they start getting out of everything. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. My sister, Sister Robin, raise your hand, Robin. God bless your heart. She said, my God, man. She said, I got so scared, I was ripping everything. She said, I had everything pierced. I was, lit, I was getting everything out. And what I've got to clean you up. Amen. Give you an inheritance Hallelujah. among them that are sanctified. That's right. And Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing can straighten you out like God can. That's right. And when God, Hallelujah. when God straighten you out, it's the greatest day of your life. You made lies. There's a wonderful thing Hallelujah. where you ain't got to hide under lies no more. That's right. You ain't got to hide under it no more. Amen. Here it is. God Almighty giving the whole world now. Amen. This is the message for the last day. That's right. This is the message for the last day. That's right. The message for the last day is to be holy or go to hell. Amen. Huh? Amen. There's nothing in between. There is no middle man. No. It's to be holy or go to hell. That's it. There's, there's no other alternative. That's it. Oh, we take God. What did he say? For we have made lies our refuge. We have made lies our refuge and under falsehood. Under falsehood. Have we hid ourselves? There's so many people now hiding on the falsehood, got relaxed in it. That's right. On the choir, ushers, organ players, drummers, trumpet players, guitar players, playing on a church orchestra, on a church band, band and musician, they're just hiding on the un falsehood. Un the falsehood. Everybody yeah. popping up, starting churches at will. That's right. And then somebody told me that Beyonce started the church, which is Jay-Z wife. And uh, uh, Ron, don't you bleep that. Amen. Don't you bleep that. Amen. They said Beyonce started the church. And and uh, Jay-Z, Jay-Z, what? A church. Hiding on the falsehood. I want the world to know who I'm talking about. That's right. Hiding on the falsehood. Well, Pastor Jenny, she didn't sue you. That's good. Then maybe we can meet face to face. And I can tell about Acts 238. That's right. What do I can? Jay-Z is nobody to me. That's right. But flesh and blood sinner that got to obey God or the hell he's going. That's right. Do you get what I'm telling you? And on the falsehood. The world is on the falsehood. And God Almighty Hallelujah. have sent me to the world to 
pull you out of falsehood. That's right. And I'm laboring, glory to God, to pull every black and white and brown and yellow, man and woman, young and old, rich and poor, to get you out of this fake religion that you're hiding under. Go ahead. Praying unto Mary. Mary don't know you. Bounding the statues. They don't see you. Giving the sign of the cross to an image on the cross. And God said, make no image of me. You're hiding under falsehood. Going after a white Jesus and a black Jesus. Falsehood. God just wants you to bow. He said, every knee shall Lord, unto the glory of God the Father. We have made laws. We have made laws. That's what you're doing. That's right. Oh, yeah, any time you got three gods, you're hiding all alive. That's right. Church of God in Christ, I want you to hear this. Hallelujah. Church of God in Christ, Church of God in prophecy. Yeah. I want you to hear this. Anything the Bible is against, and you let it go on in your church, what did the Bible say? But we have made lies our refuge. <laughs> Lord, take God. You preachers. You will come together, come together as a board of directors yeah. to discuss your fake religion. That's right. And how can we keep it going? That's right. How can we keep it moving? Hallelujah. That's why preachers don't want people to learn the truth. Because when you learn the truth, that gives you power to question the preacher. That's right. You viewers that's watching us around the world and you that are here that come from these different churches question your bishop. Right. Ask him why is it all these men can divorce and remarry in the church and they still say they're Christians. Right. Ask them why is it that homosexuals is able to run free in the church. Ask them why we had a rainbow flag on our church. Says when do homosexuality represent Jesus? Amen. Amen. Awesome. Ask them. Amen. Ask them why you found a confederate flag on my church. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Ask them, why is the American flag in your church? We don't pledge allegiance to this country. We pledge our allegiance to God. And I raise it. Ask him. He's hiding on the falsehood. What did he say? But we have made lies of refuge. We made lies. Our refuge. Glory to God, our refuge. And under falsehood. And under hypocrisy. Have we hid ourselves. We hid ourselves. Therefore, thus saith the thus Lord God. the Lord God. Behold, I lay in Zion, I lay in for, a Zion for a foundation a stone. A tried stone. A tried stone. A precious cornerstone. precious. A sure foundation. It's a sure foundation. He that believeth shall we, not. We, we're building on a sure foundation. Sure foundation. Yeah. Yes, hey man, that's why we can blow the trumpet loud. That's right. On a short foundation. Sure foundation. When you build on a short foundation, Jesus Christ Himself Hallelujah. is the chief cornerstone in whom all the builders are fit to frame together, glorify to a holy temple in the Lord. That's